So here we'll attempt to change the thermostat in a Hayward H-series natural gas pool heater. So if you're having a problem getting it started or keeping it lit, it could be your um, thermostat switch. Now, I made the other video last year about troubleshooting it, and I'll just briefly brush up on how to do that. Um, basically, when you light the pilot light, the pilot burns against the thermal uh, pile or thermal couple and generates current to hold open a little spring which will hold that gas valve open as the thing runs. So should the pilot go out, the valve will not allow gas to flow and blow something up or burn your pool heater down. So, first step is getting the pilot lit. Once you look through that little hole on the right angle, you should see it burning. I don't know if it'll come up through the video, probably not. And I hope the audio works out on this run because very windy. And of course the airplane has to pass by right as I'm speaking. So, just, okay, plane's gone. Continue. So you're gonna check all your switches. There's one here, this is the pressure switch. Uh, when the little thing pops out and hits the switch, completes the circuit, lets it know there's water flowing and uh, it'll come on. The other one is one limit switch here, one limit switch there, and one in the back, and of course, the thermostat and the on-off switch. So all you do is you pull out the contacts and you short them with uh, a little jumper or even a pair of pliers. I just use this, and you just touch them together. Or you, uh, you take them off from the switch, so they'll be hanging like that, and then you touch them together, and if it comes on, that means that it's that switch that's no good. Keep in mind, it could be more than one switch, so uh, do note that and always make sure that there's water flowing through the thing. You can hear mine has a little bit of air in it, uh, which can sometimes cause the little pressure switch not to engage. So do be mindful of that. And that's pretty much all you can do for troubleshooting. If you do have a problem with your gas valve, you'll need to change that whole thing out, and that is uh, a bit of a bear. So, assuming your gas valve is good, and your switches are good, and you've discovered that it's your thermostat, that's what I'm going to go over today. Also, you can just short out these two terminals here if your pilot's lit and it'll light it right away. Again, make sure there's water flowing through it. So you short those out and you'll hear it come on, that means that the valve is good. So, over to the um, thermostat. This guy over here. Now, this is what your thermostat looks like. There's only two contacts right here. And of course, the copper wire which goes to the, um, the probe that takes the temperature of the water. Not exactly, but in the rough uh, neighborhood. Oops, and it just broke off. There you go. Okay, so a disclaimer you should not field service these. You should just get a new one and pop it in and be done with it. Um, but I'm going to show you how to field service it. This is the actual switch itself. This is what goes bad because you get corrosion and shit in here and it's just no good. You can't really open this up without grinding out the rivets, so if you really want to go at it, you can do that. Um, I showed you how to do that on the pressure switch, to just put in a new uh, switchy. So I'm going to show you how to change these out. I have some spares here. I have this one right here and the other one over there. This thing here, which is the actual element from the probe that takes the temperature, you can't seem to get this off. It's like press fitted in here. So that looks like it would just be more work for nothing. So what I've done is taken mine, which is over here, and I just unscrewed the switch from it. And I'll show you exactly how I did that. This guy over here. So on the front of your control panel, there's your knob. You just pop that guy right off say uh, D-lock like that and you just pull it off. Then there's two bolts on here. Those are uh, 11 seconds of an inch. 11.32. Take those off. One, two. And then the whole thing pops off like this. Now while this is on the heater you can also test it like I did in my last video. You take your multimeter, set it to continuity. And when you short out the probes, 
you'll hear a little beeping. So, we'll do that right now, and I'll prove to you that this one is my good. I'm gonna touch here, touch here. And also you can touch, you see I've sanded the little contacts to make sure there's not just a bit of dirt that's keeping it. So you can see when I touch it, it does in fact go. So we're gonna touch one here, one here, and I'm going to depress the switch. And you can see there ain't sweet fuck all happening. So this is FUBAR. Now, this guy over here, which you can assume that this would still be on your heater panel or whatever. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna press here, and you can see it's working. Now, this could be a two-man job, but try and get the probes on there. This would be easier with clamp probes, but I don't have those. We're gonna twist the uh, temperature knob, and you hear, I don't know if you can hear the clicking through the video. Still don't know how this audio is going to turn out, but we'll see. Um, as I'm twisting this, it's getting to the limit point, and you can hear it's engaging the switch. So we know this switch is good. Now, there's uh, two more screws on here, which I'm going to go and take out. Just standard Phillips head screws. Take those out. Now, once those are out, there's two more screws over here. I'm going to go ahead and take these guys out too. So those guys are out, and here's the switch. That's all there is to it. So you just take one out and put it where the other one was. And uh, that's how you can service your thermostat limiter switch without having to mess with this little guy here if you're stuck trying to get him out, um, or putting in a brand new one if you have a spare part, or if you want to go ahead and have to start pulling panels off to uh, trace this wire here, which is the um, the uh, contact wire where the probe must be somewhere back here on the pipe, I assume it's, uh, I don't know where it is. This is the other limiter switch, by the way. So should your water ever get to boiling point, which is unlikely to happen with a pool, but maybe if a spa or something, if the water can get dangerously hot, that'll kick in. So do note that's your other limiter switch. But this thing, I don't know exactly where it goes because I've never taken this whole panel off, but I think we just take these guys off and it should be there somewhere so um, if you don't want to mess with that and you just need to change that switch because uh, you need a spare part that's how you do it so I will just show you a part number if I can find one uh, there's no part numbers on these things but I think it's Eaton that makes them there is a part number on the switch itself show it here for you. Yeah, it's Eaton. So that's the part number for this. That's what it looks like. So it does say no field repairs, because you're not really supposed to mess with these things. You're just supposed to put in a, a new one for safety reasons, but I know what I'm doing here, and uh, I don't really leave this thing on unsupervised. There's usually always someone home. Um, so worst case, it does fucking blow up. Uh, Someone will notice pretty quickly. Um, that's all there is to say about that. Uh, here's the schematic. If you want to pause the video and take a gander at that. Here's some more part numbers. Uh, some will be a little bit different depending on the heater that you have. But they're all generally the same basic idea. Uh, this guy is an H3, H250, actually. Uh, yeah, these are all 250s. That's a 200. But, um, it's all basically the same shit, but like I said... Thing is messed up. I'm a call, so I'll go ahead and end this video.